of a new way. He was also the head of a new covenant. And he says, I did not come to impress you, but I came in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. How did that power represent itself? He says, that your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. When someone turns from being a Greek or a Jew or a religious person or an atheist and they turn to the living God, that is the ultimate expression of the power of God to save a man. That is a heart transfer, heart uh, replacement. That is a heart change. And that is the greatest miracle when he takes a stubborn evil heart and turns it around and makes it soft and compliant to the will of God. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age. Guys, are we not trying to be tricky and sleek and pretty and relevant when we try to connect with the mindset of the modern day American? We have to question some of our tactics. We have to run them through the grid. We have to run them through the Word of God. We gotta bring them to the cross. We gotta bring them to the Holy Spirit. And we gotta say, are these practices necessary? Are they? Are we trying to be too cool? Because Paul says, that's not what we did. He goes, we don't try to please the rulers of this age who are passing away. We're not gonna, one thing's gonna lead to another thing. Trends come and go. We're not trying to be relevant to a trend. What we're trying to do is connect with the people that are lost. Jesus did that as a Jew. He probably spoke a lot differently in a Greek city than he did in a Jewish city. He, knew, he spoke differently to a prostitute than he did to a rabbi like Nicodemus. He spoke differently to a leper or to someone who was a beggar, a poor man, than he did to an erudite intellectual. But it wasn't about his clothes and it, and it wasn't about anything in the flesh. It was just simply about hearing the Father, connecting to the Father's heart, and then proclaiming to that generation, that group, that city, what the Father was saying to them. And of course, the Father knowing them and the Father loving them, he would pre speak words that would save and change. So you could, you could be a wacky looking person, but if you're under the anointing of God and you're just preaching under that precious uh, Holy Spirit uh, power, people will get saved. And what because, you know, people try to copy it. You know, you've got long hair, short hair, suit and tie. You know, you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt, whatever. It doesn't matter. People will try to copy you because they think it's what you're wearing. That you're effective because of what you're wearing. You're effective because of where you're preaching. Oh, if you're preaching out in the street, you know, that's working. I, I, I think that's great. I think we should preach out in the street. But my point is it's not what you're doing in the outward side. It's who you are on the inward side. It's that you are no Christ. You understand what the implications are of following him. You've carried your cross. You're under the influence of the Holy Spirit and you're preaching the words of, of the Spirit that are tied to the words of the new covenant that are proclaiming to you a crucified God who came to die for sin to change the hearts of men and bring them back into right relationship with their creator. That's what he preached, and that's what changed. You know, the rulers of sage, they're not preaching that. Academia, they're not preaching that. Churchianity and church modes of operation and church growth mechanisms, a lot of them, they're not preaching that. Some of them are, some of them aren't. I'm not here to judge that. All I'm saying is, you and I gotta find our place in God. You and I gotta connect with our spirit-led calling. Whether in a business sense, we, 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 we're going to operate in that realm, in the marketplace, we're going to operate in the school, in the classroom, we're going to operate as moms or dads, or we're going to operate as a coach, we're going to operate, you know, as a crazy missionary, or we're going to operate as someone who is a street preacher. These people are all going to exist in the economy of God in this time and in this season. Verse 7 says, of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God predestined before the ages to, for our glory. See, if we got excited about this, it would change us. Just we're not excited about this, the basic message. And we gotta get back to that. That's what the Lord's revealed to me today. We gotta get back to the new covenant. We gotta get back to the cross. We gotta get back to carrying our cross. We gotta get back to just listening to the voice of God, which is connected to the scriptures. He's gonna re-preach it through his own way, but it's gonna connect and it's gonna not contradict anything that's in this word. One final uh, comfort I want to give uh, to those of you who are trying to uh, find your way. I spoke last time of divinely uh, orchestrated uh, stuckness, and we certainly have felt stuck 
and our family feels stuck, but we believe God is going to raise us up. And part of our stuckness has led us to back to the cross. It's led us back to deeper times of meditation. And this is what we all need to do. We've got to find our way in God. It's a journey. It's tough. Anybody who tells you it's easy is a lie to you. It's tough to follow God. But one of the things that God used was, he's, he, he laid it on me like this. Argue from the big things to the small things. The specific things are like, where do you want me to live? Where do you want me to preach? You know, who do you want me to preach to? Those are specifics. But what we first have to do is establish the big things. And the big things are, you and I, if we know the Lord today, we are sons and daughters of God. We are eternally blessed. Our bank account is completely full and it will never diminish. We, we always have enough to do what God, God is calling us to do. That will never change from now to the end when it's our time to leave. And it's not always money, folks. It's, it's the resources, it's the people. We need people around us. We need people to pray for us. We need people to support. We need people to do their part to, to help the whole body uh, be nourished. And we are in covenant. This new covenant is a both bound promise that can never be broken. And because of that, God is the covenanter. He's the source of the covenant. He's the author of the covenant. He's the establisher of the covenant. He's the sealer of the covenant. And we are bound by blood, the blood of Yahshua, Jesus. We are bound by his blood and he cannot violate loving us and nurturing us because the blood of Jesus constantly requires it of him. And we are indwelt with his spirit. When you establish those big things, it'll help you get to the little things because you know that God has a plan for you. All of us have a plan in the kingdom. God would not save us to, to isolate us, to not use us. God saves us for the purpose of spreading his fame across the earth. And he's already established that plan for you in eternity. It's already done. In one sense, outside of time and space history, your plan, your, your ministry, your way, whether you're just a simple mom, which is an amazing thing to God, raising up children in the fear of the Lord and to teach them their way. That's the power. That's the big stuff. You're, you know, they say that, uh, forget the way it is, but the essence of it was kings are created on the knees of their mothers. You know, they're built there while they're little boys and princesses while they're little girls. Don't ever devalue training your children in the ways of God and just living the life of faith before them because that is as powerful as anything you can do. And God has promised through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to guide us into this plan. So please, dear brothers and sisters, old and young, you know, please recognize that God has a plan and He will guide you. Because if you have all those other things in place, if you know you're a son or daughter, if you know you're eternally blessed, if you understand that you're bound in covenant with God and that you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit has a job and it is to guide each and every one of us into paths of blessing, paths of service, even paths of struggle, paths of dying to self, greater maturity conformity to Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about, guys. Whether we live one place or another, whether we're talking to one set of people or another, conformity to Jesus, being mature in Him, is what it's all about. I praise the Lord for this opportunity to share, and I bless you in the name of the Lord.